Hey guys. So today, um, this video is going to go over the travel apps that we use. I have a whole folder full of them here. I've got two pages worth. Um, some of these apps I use all the time, whether we're traveling locally or, you know, just across in Virginia for a dance competition. Others I have used with Fidelity in uh, planning this trip. So I'm going to go over my favorites um, and ones that I recommend that you have if you're taking any sort of major um, RV or camping trip. So the first one is RV Parky. RV Parky will help you find RV parks wherever you're going. Um, so I'm just going to type in Destin, Florida. That's where we went um, over Christmas break. The map pops up and you can zoom in and find just about anything you want. You can filter to show you only the things you want to see on your map. So I have mine set up to show me um, all different types of campgrounds, Walmarts, Cracker Barrels, Cabela's, rest areas, um, and casinos, I believe. So you can, if you touch the RV park, it'll pop up. It'll tell you what it is, roughly, um, you know, what the amenities are, how much it costs, and then you can click it and go directly to a little bit more of a description. You can visit their website, call them. Um, so that's a nice feature. The other feature is the Walmarts and the Cracker Barrels. So it'll tell you if they allow overnight parking or not. I have found that right there, there's none. I have found that a lot of the Walmarts out west do not allow overnight parking probably because the amount of traffic and the amount of travelers is so high um, but you can find them the green ones with the yellow stars those are military campgrounds um, I could probably take that off because we would never be able to stay in one of those the green ones with the black tent like thing is state parks and let me find where there's a rest area. So these blue ones with the white arrow will tell you um, the rest areas. And it will tell you the amenities that they have there. So this is where you're going to want to know if there's a dump station or not that you're going to be able to use. Um, and I can show you what that icon looks like if I can find one. Not all rest areas have those kinds of amenities, but a lot of them do. So, like I said, you can set this. Um, here's a Cabela's right here. Cabela's um, will oftentimes allow overnight parking as well. This one does not. Um, of course, when I want to show you something, I'm not going to be able to find it. But anyhow... So that's RV Parky, um, and I really love RV Parky. The next one is iExit. iExit will, it'll identify the interstate that's either closest to you or the one that you're driving on. So I'm at home right now, so the closest interstate to me is 95. Um, but it will tell you, it'll recognize where you are, and it'll tell you the exits that are coming up and what is available at those exits. So if you need gas, if you're looking for food, if you're looking for a hotel, I use this app all the time. Um, it will tell me how far away I am from the exit. Can we make it another 20 miles? Can we, you know, or, oh, let's stop in five miles. It will also tell you the rest areas and where they are. Um, and we'll often have reviews. So that is a really good app. I use it all the time. Um, the other one for planning this trip was Harvest Hosts. Harvest Hosts is where you can find the golf courses, the wineries, the breweries, places to stay overnight for free. Um, so along the way, wherever you're stopping, you can type that in and it will locate it. And then you can click the, the tractor is a farm, the wine glass is a winery, and the beer mug is a brewery. Um, and the little blue 
one with the white building, those are usually museums or places like that. So if you click on one, it'll tell you what it is. Um, now, sometimes you have to click on it and people will tell you how far off it is from the interstate. So this one says we're 2.3 miles east of US 31. Again, you don't wanna be getting off on exits where you're gonna to have to drive you know, 10 plus miles to get to where you're going. You wanna be able to pull off within a few miles, find your location, and so you can easily get back on the interstate. Um, the reviews are usually very um, up to date. So like this one, the latest review is five days ago, um, six days ago, again. If you click the little heart at the bottom, that will save it to your favorites list. So if I go to mine, I have a whole list of harvest hosts that are along the route of our trip. And I can find them again easily. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention about harvest hosts is you have to pay a membership fee and it's a year long membership fee. I believe full price is around $70, but they often have deals that you can save 15%. Even at $70 paying full price, using Harvest Host is well worth that membership fee. Um, you're saving money on campsites. Re reservations are usually only required a few days to a few weeks in advance. Um, and you're getting to experience something that is definitely better than a Walmart parking lot or a Cracker Barrel parking lot. Um, again, you're you're staying there for free, but they're recommending that you um, use the Harvest Host or support the Harvest Host, and those experiences are are good just in themselves. We stayed at a winery on the way home from Florida and North Carolina. It was really great. We pulled in, left the kids in the RV, went inside, had a wine tasting. Um, met a fellow RV couple, had some nice conversations. So um, you may not be necessarily saving a ton of money because you're probably spending what you would spend at a campsite. But again, you're just getting a different kind of experience. So I would definitely recommend Harvest Hosts. And you can see how many are across the United States. Um, you only get access to this information once you pay your membership fee. So you can find the hosts, like you'll be able to look on a map like this, but you will not be able to click it and get information on what that host is until you pay that membership fee. So that's just a little FYI. Definitely recommend Harvest Hosts. Um, Gas Buddy, um, most people that travel have Gas Buddy. Um, sometimes I found that they weren't updated. You know, the last update was two days ago and, and we know that prices can change, you know, in two days. The other thing that I will recommend is don't always go for the cheapest gas. Um, sometimes that will land you in a not so great part of town. Um, we, we stopped at, I think, two fuel stations on the way to Florida that were a little bit shady and decided after that, mm, you know what, we're not always going to go for the cheapest fuel. We're going to stick with the Flying J's, the truck stops, things like that, where we feel a little safer and we know that we're getting good fuel. Um, if your RV is a diesel and requires DEF, some of the regular fuel stations will not carry DEF. Um, our RV does not. Ours was one of the last models made that did not require that. But if yours does, that's just another thing to keep in mind. Um, we have the Good Sam apps. We have Good Sam perks, Pilot Flying J rewards. That'll help you find all the all the Flying J stations. This Copilot GPS, um, this one is custom to our RV. So you can see that I've created a Tiffin um, settings and you can put in all the specs of your RV, how long you are, how tall you are, things that you want to avoid. Um, obviously because we're 12 and a half foot tall, we want to make sure that we're not going to run into any clearance problems. So when I put in where we're going, 
with the settings that I've put in here, it will make sure that it's not taking us um, under any overpasses where we're not gonna meet the clearance. Um, so that's one thing that I love about that. And then of course you can start a new trip, find a location, wherever you're going, it'll get you there. Um, Camp and Diem, that's another one where you can find RV parks, you can find public land, free camping, overnight parking, and nearby dump stations. So some of these apps do very similar things, but it's just nice to have a couple different choices. I have the WordPress app, so I can update our blog directly from my phone or my iPad. And then um, the last one, Waze is something that I usually do not use when we're in the RV. The whole premise behind Waze is to keep you out of traffic. And when you're driving a car, that's fine. You can go down these little back roads, take these little detours, and you're not going to have a problem. When you're in an RV, Waze doesn't know you're in an RV and can take you down some pretty windy small roads. So I just avoid Waze when we're in the RV. Yelp, I use Yelp mostly to find food and restaurants. Um, I use that even when we're, you know, like I said, at a dance competition. What's around me? What can I eat? The other thing that I love is this Around Me app. And again, this will tell you all sorts of things, but I use it mostly for the restaurants. And it'll tell you, it'll uh, recognize your location and it'll tell you how far these places are away from you. And if you click on it, um, you can often go to the website, you can preview the menu, you can call ahead, um, order for pickup, whatever you wanna do. And there's often reviews there too. So my rule is when we travel, we do not eat at a place that we have at home. So outside of about Chick-fil-A, because I'll eat at Chick-fil-A wherever there is, um, we will not go to an Outback, we will not go to an Applebee's because we have those things at home. I really like to find the locally owned mom and pop restaurants um, to eat. And we have had some really, really fabulous experiences. Um, it's always fun to meet the locals. It's fun to support a small business. And it's nice to just get something that you don't have at home. So that's our rule when we're traveling. If we have it at home, we don't go there, except Chick-fil-A. So there's our travel apps. Hopefully you saw something that may be useful to you.